Hey everybody, I'm Jeremy Siskin, and I have a friend here today. Hi! This is Leah Booth. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, Leah is an amazing singer, and she has a new album out. Hold up your new album, Leah. It's called Life Can Be Beautiful. Yeah, hold it up to the camera. And everybody should check it out. It's a great album, so and Leah's a great good. singer. Thank you. Um, and I've had a few people ask me on the channel to talk about accompanying singers, and so I thought I would have Leah over, and we would demonstrate... Um, We'll do a few different videos. This one is going to be for like a medium swing tune, something that's just in the pocket. And uh, we've played a couple times this tune, You Turn the Tables on Me. So for me, option one, if we're playing a medium swing tune, um, and I sometimes think of this as like demo piano, is to basically pretend to be a bass player in your left hand and then comp with three or four note voicings in your right hand. Um, the two problems that I see most in students or if I'm seeing you know amateur pianists is one that they play the bass line too high on the piano so remember that the bass line you can't even see this note it's so low um, <laughs> this is the lowest E on the piano and that's the lowest note of a bass so you want to think about being kind of in the octave and a half above that lowest E on the piano when you're making a bass line. If you're around C3, the third C on the piano, you're starting to really get too high. The second biggest mistake that I see is that people go directly into a, a four feel, and that's really gonna limit yourself. So I would really recommend starting with a two feel on most medium swing tunes. It doesn't have to be every single one. So let's demonstrate the style, yeah? Yeah. Um, so we're gonna do You Turn the Tables on Me. I'll play a little intro. Cool. Forgot to mute the mic. <laughs> you turn the tables on me, and now I'm falling for you. You turn the tables on me. Oh, I can't believe that it's true. I used to think when you brought the pretty presents you brought, why hadn't you brought me more? But now when you come, I'd welcome anything from the five and ten cent store you used to call me the top. You put me up on a throne, and then you let me fall with a drop. And now I'm out on my own But after thinking it over and over I got what was coming to me Just like the sting of a bee You turn the tables on me the presents you brought why hadn't you brought me more but now when you come I'd welcome anything from the five and ten cent store you used to call me the top you put me up on a throne and then you let me fall with a drop and now I'm out on I got what was coming to me Just like the sting of a bee You turn the tables on me Yes! So you heard that the first chorus I played mostly in a two feel and then in the second chorus I went to a four feel. And how is it, what is it like to sing with that? Leah, any thoughts? Well, for me, it kind of, I mean, it changes the, the feel. It's, some of it's really light and airy. Some of it's, it's just more drivey. When you get into the four feel, it definitely moves forward a little bit more. Um, and it informs my improv as well. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're leaving a lot of space with the two feel, I will probably also get like a little bit lighter with my tone, do some more floaty things. Um, and when you get into the four feel, it gets to be kind of a little more like... Not not grittier, but just maybe 
I don't even know how to explain what I'm thinking here. Yeah, there's like a little bit of digging deep. There's, that you, yeah, that you yeah, do yeah, yeah. When you get into that four feel, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, more notes, a little bit of in, a little bit more intensity to the swing. Totally. More accents. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a few thoughts about what what I'm doing pianistically. Firstly, you know, even if you're playing in a two feel or a four feel. Um, especially around the 4, 8, 16 measure phrases, you want to do something a little bit different. Whether that means changing up your comping pattern, putting in some little hits, you know, I would go do something like that around the cadence with the bass and the chords coming in together. Um, You also don't necessarily need to play chords the whole time. You could play fills. And the fills could be chords. You know, I like to think of it as like you're a big band and you could be the trombone section of the big band. So, um, or you could play it melodically. Um, let, let's show them just a little bit of that right at the top. Yeah. Cool. One, two, uh, you got the pickup. Go ahead. <laughs> you turn the tables on me. on me oh I can't believe that it's true I used to think when you brought the presents you brought why hadn't you brought me more but now when you come I'd welcome anything from the five and ten cent store yeah cool so you heard a couple different things there first of all I was doing uh, like call and response basically mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. Leah for the first eight measures and then when we went into the second eight measures and notice it's always at these four eight sixteen measure lines that things change um, then I went into a four feel but kind of a different four feel instead of walking a bass line I was repeating the same note and in my right hand I was doing what I call the Freddie Green style of comping where I'm kind of doing a guitar strum Chunk. and then Right two bars before the cadence, I just held chords. By the way, this is all predicated on you actually knowing, you know, you don't need to know every single note and word of the melody. It's cool if you do. Um, but I at least know what the phrases of the melody are and where they're likely to come. And of course, we're listening and adjusting, yep. you know, and they might come somewhere a little bit different. Um, but at least I have a knowledge of the tune and I'm not just reading it off of, you know, um, iReal Pro or whatever, um, in this case, at least. <laughs> okay, so that's probably the first bucket of styles would be walking a bass line, playing a bass in two, and then comping, filling, doing something like that in the right hand. A more pianistically maybe difficult or sophisticated way to play would be actually playing stride piano. Um, so let's try a little bit of that. Is that cool? cool? Yeah. Turn the tables on me And now I'm falling for you You turn the tables on me Oh, I can't believe that it's true I used to think When you brought the presents you brought Why hadn't you brought me more? But now when you come I'd welcome anything from the fire and store you used to call me the top you put me up on a throne and then you let me fall with a drop and now I'm out on my own but after thinking it over and over and over I got what was coming to me just like the sting of a bee you turn the tables on me yeah um so how does that feel different for you leah playing that, with stride it's definitely more playful mm. so it it makes me smile more it makes <laughs> me want to be a little a little silly a little you know a little more playful cool I like that a lot yeah and for me it opens up my right hand to do more so if i'm playing a bass line with my left hand then my right hand is kind of stuck in the middle of the piano the chord's you know, we don't need a chord every 
you know, we don't need me to play a chord every time that chord changes, but most chords we are going to want some kind of information like that. When I'm playing stride, my left hand's playing both the bass and the chords, and therefore my right hand can start to get into some of these playful trouble. <laughs> um, and so I think it's often the question, you know, of students, like, okay, if you're playing stride solo piano, then your right hand has to play the melody. If you're playing stride in a duo like this, then what does your right hand do? Because you have both the bass and the chords. And again, I would point you back to a big band. And if you're looking to be a great accompanist of singers, learn how to play the great arrangements for Frank Sinatra on the piano. You know, what would the backgrounds be? What would the trumpets be doing? What sorts of fills would the saxophone be doing? Um, I, I think that that would be a really great way to go. So a few things that um, I might have done, I don't really remember, I was just, <laughs> I was just playing with you. Yeah. Um, but so, you know, the right hand can fill in some upper register chords. So so here I'm playing an octave between my thumb and my pinky and filling in a couple notes in between. Um, of course, it could play some single note lines. Arpeggios are pretty heavy in the style. If I do that all the time, it's probably getting annoying, but um, it doesn't stop me. Uh, <laughs> and then, you know, sometimes the right hand will come down and play chords. You might have noticed that sometimes I'm playing like tense in my left hand. And I know not everybody can play tense, but you can always roll. And so I'm playing. Also play in that middle register and kind of have a different sort of rhythm for the chords because the thing about stride is that stride is quarter notes basically right and so we love quarter notes but in order to give even more rhythmic support to provide some of that syncopation um, that singers like behind them then you want to get the right hand involved more than anything for rhythm for accents for syncopation for throwing some other things in you willing to try another style? Totally. Oh, yeah. Okay, so um, now I'm going to play in more of a shared hands style. Um, and so shared hands means that I'm going to be voicing the chords together between the two hands. Lots of information about that in other videos and my book, Playing Solo Jazz Piano. Buy it today. Commercial. Yes. Um, and so I'm going to be leaving more space, but I might also hold some bass notes this is going to be maybe a little bit uh, more subdued a little bit classier if anything can be classier than what we've already done um so let's let's experiment let's see what we do all right here it goes you turn the tables on me and now i falling for you you turn the tables on me oh I can't believe that it's true I used to think when you brought the pretty presents you brought why hadn't you brought me more but now when you come I'd welcome anything from the five and ten cent store you used to call me the top you put me up on a throne and then you let me fall with a drop and now i'm out on my own but after thinking it over and over i got what was coming to me just like the sting of a bee you turn the tables on me and now on me I can't believe that it's true I used to think when you brought the presents you brought why hadn't you brought me more but now when you come I welcome 
anything from the five and ten cent store. You used to call me the top, you put me up on a throne, and then you let me fall with a drop, and now I'm out on my own. Dragons like the sting of a bee You turn the tables on me <laughs> You got me doing this the whole time I like that uh, So that's the effect of the Sherry I'm digging in. voicing I'm digging in <laughs> Yeah, yeah. so how, how did it feel? I like that feel a lot yeah. um, uh, I think because And it's difficult for me to explain Technically and theoretically How it makes me feel And what it is doing to inform my Um, my improvisation Mm -hmm. Um, but it makes me want to also leave space Mm. and kind of wait for you to play and then I'm coming in and giving a little response similarly to your single line stuff melodic stuff earlier Um, but I also feel like I can dig in more with my whole body and Mm. just like yeah I it's really it's really interesting Um, because there's space I'm like I'm doing this and I and I'm doing this with my body but also musically right yeah that's that's cool that's a really cool observation um yeah and caveat to this style especially but to some degree all these styles which is that you have to be working with a singer who has a good sense of internal pulse and a good sense of internal pitch right I've played gigs we've all played gigs in a professional setting with singers who really need you to spell it out for them in which case I'd probably go with method one of like pretending to be a band playing some bass and really like nailing those chords. Um, But when I have a singer that I trust, then we can have this push and pull, I can leave space. I don't have to play on the downbeat every time and it's not a panic, right? Um, I do know some singers who if I was like, (laughs) you turn the tables on me, they'd be like, oh my God, (laughs) like why isn't there anybody playing on beat one, (laughs) right? So, you know, a few different things that I did there um, in terms of that approach, so, at the beginning of that second chorus, I was I was just comping and I was playing mostly ands of twos and ands of fours, what I call the red garland pattern. And I'm playing the bass, I'm playing the third and the seventh, and then some color tones. And like Leah said, it's a good groove to dig into it is a good groove. when you're repeating that comping pattern and not, you know, just trying to really nail those offbeats. Um, but other times, we again were doing more of a call and response. And I was thinking of my top note as a melody note. Um, and the lowest note was often the bass note. And I was trying to play melodies. Once you get yourself in that mindset that you don't have to define the beat and you don't have to define the bass note for each chord, then there's all this room to play. In fact, let's show them an extreme version. Leah, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Can't wait. Um, But I'm going to do, I think of this as like a pointillistic version, okay? So I'm I'm really going to let the the time and the harmony go a little bit and we're going to play off of each other. Let's see what happens. Yep. All right. Godspeed. turn the tables on me and now I'm falling for you you turn the tables on me oh I can't believe that it's true I used to think when you brought the pretty presents you brought why hadn't you brought me more but now when you come I'd welcome anything from the five and ten cent store you used to call me the top you put me up on a throne and then you let me fall with a drop now i'm out of my own but after thinking it over and over and over and over i got what was coming to me just like the sting of a bee you turn the tables on me Turn the tables on me. Oh, I can't 
can't believe that it's true I used to think when you brought the presents you brought Why hadn't you brought me more? But now when you come, I'd welcome anything from the five and ten cent store You used to call me the top You put me up on a throne And then you let me fall with a drop And now I'm out on my own But after thinking it over and over I got what was coming to me just like the sting of a bee, you turn the tables on me. <laughs> wow! That's how to get fired from your dinner. That game. was fun. <laughs> I, well, yes, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, so Put a little uh, out there. Yeah, I like that. Um, it was a slightly extreme version, but like I said, if you both have that internal sense of time and that internal sense of pitch. Um, then you know you don't have to define everything and of course that you know that example showed that we still stayed together we knew yeah. exactly where one another was um, and you could do that to lesser degrees by leaving out some bass notes leaving out um, some obvious uh, points in the rhythm you know not playing beat one every time yep. all right i think that does it i have no idea how long this video has been because i'm having too much fun it, it was um, a good time <laughs> let's uh thank leah do you want to show your cd one yes. more time it's called life can be beautiful leah right with a, an i Woo! leah boost go. um go check it out there wherever is. you can stream or buy music yes, it's pretty it's cool everywhere. it's everywhere all right thanks guys see you soon